Hello YouTube, Six Speed Dakota here. Now, how many people have feel like they're being ripped off by oil changed companies and dealerships? Well, if you're in that list, then you might want to pay attention to this next video because this is how to change your engine oil. Now, I mean, I used to work for Honda and damn, they charged 45 bucks for just an oil change. I don't know what it is now. This is a couple of years ago. So, you know, I do all my own oil changes, and really, to spend that much money, it's $70 for a synthetic oil change at Honda. So it costs me to change my own oil about half that. So, I mean, is it worth it? Well, you can gauge that for yourself. But really, it's not all that hard. The reason we change our engine oil is because gasoline-burning engines produce carbon, and the carbon that... The, the, for a byproduct from the combustion gets into the engine oil, it contaminates it. Now, diamonds are what are what's car was was are made of carbon, and that's the hardest substance known to man. So carbon is a very hard substance, and it'll actually scratch the inside of the engine up. So that's one reason. The other reason is oils like little ball bearings. It's it allows the the moving parts to slide on those little ball bearings, and what happens is the oil actually breaks down over time. That's why we change our engine oil. So, most uh, vehicle manufacturers recommend every 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers. You know, some others recommend differently. You're going to have to check your manual for different specs. I like to change it every 3,000 miles because my Dakota here, well, she gets pretty dirty pretty often, I, I find, when I pull the dipstick. And also, it's uh, notorious for sludging this, this motor. So, as long as I keep the oil changed, it should be A OK. So that's the other reason. If you're doing a lot of short trip driving, the engine's not always warm all the time, you're going to want to change your oil more frequently because it's just, it, it breaks down the oil that much faster. So tag along and uh, let's, yeah, let's change the oil. So stuff you're going to need. Okay, well first thing, you're going to need your standard set of hand tools, you know, your sockets and stuff like that. And either a pair of oil filter pliers, a strap wrench, or one of these metal band wrenches that gets really stuck. That's a heavy duty chain wrench. Or this one, which also fits a Dodge oil filter. I have a vast array of tools here. You're also going to need an oil filter, which I got this KNN Performance Gold Wrench Off Oil Filter. I'm going to try this one. It's quite heavy, seems kind of robust. And uh, you're going to need some motor oil in the correct weight. So in the Dodge, I use Castrol Syntec 5W30. You don't have to use synthetic. If you've got a brand new vehicle and you're just changing the oil for the first couple times, I'd recommend that you start with Syntec. After the motor's broken in, put synthetic in, and your engine's going to be a lot happier. So that's the, the brief preamble. So uh, first step is we've got to take her for a quick drive because she's been sitting in the garage for the last couple hours. So warmer engine, the oil flows better. But you don't want to heat it up too much, or else you're going to burn yourself. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's uh, test drive the vehicle. Quick drive around the church parking lot, get the motor all warmed up. Oh, focus. Come on, focus. There we go. So what I like to do with this thing is because it's got a five-digit trip odometer, is I just reset the trip odometer every time that I do an oil change because I'm the only one that works on this vehicle. But if you have trouble remembering, then you might want to put a sticker up in the top corner of your window. There's the annoying seatbelt dinger again. So once again, you don't want to get it too, too hot, but just warm enough to where the oil will flow well.
Now, if you've got a truck like me, that's 4x4 and everything else, then you probably won't need yourself a set of ramps like this. It just so happens that my ATV ramps actually double as oil change ramps. Uh, if you need actually to raise your vehicle up off the off the floor a little bit more to get a better access, I'm just doing it because it's a bit of a pain to get underneath it. The front cross member is a little low on this truck. Uh, you don't have ramps, then use a suitable jack and jack sense. Do not use your factory scissor jack and go underneath there because you will end up dying. So do not do that. Uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna want to start working on cars, if this is your first oil change, then Go ahead and buy yourself a jack and some stands. Like, you know, they're your local Canadian Tire, Walmart, or wherever. They're pretty cheap. Just make sure that you're not overloading them because that could be dangerous as well. Now that we're past our little preamble there, first step is we're going to go in here. Oops. We're going to pop the hood. All right. This truck, the little thing is right there. Push down and lift. And under the hood of this beast sits the 4.7 liter Magnum V8. Ah, with a few toys attached to it. Alright, so what some people like to do is they like to take this cap off to aid in oil draining because they think it creates a suction inside when you pull the plug. It really doesn't matter. You know, when I used to work at Honda they used to do it anyway, but if you're going to take your cap off, leave it on your hood latch so that if you accidentally decide that you're going to try to drive off after you're done filling the oil, well, your hood's not going to shut. So make sure that you do that because, you know, uh, don't ask me how I know I accidentally left the, the cap undone one time. That was a mistake a few years ago. And since I've started doing this, I haven't done it since. So learn from my mistakes and don't make the same ones. So the first step is we get our seat of the I'm going to throw it underneath there. And I'm going to grab my big light. Plug it in. Alright, there we go. Now the first step after we've done the hood and taken the cap off is now we got to find the oil drain plug. Now if you look straight up and you see the pulley, the front pulley of this engine, this guy right here, that's the engine. If you go back and you see this droop right down, it's gonna go. It goes and it actually goes underneath the steering rack and droops down. This is your oil pan. That is your oil drain plug. If you go further back, that's your transmission. There, you can see the kind of the ribs in the casing. If you have an automatic, you're gonna have a pan. So if it's a very long and flat pan with a drain plug in the bottom, so if imports have that. Do not pull that out. That is your transmission pan. I've seen that been done about four or five times in high school shop class. So make sure you get the... It's, it's going to have a big droop to it right here. And that's your drain plug there. That's what we're going to take out. So, here's a shot of the drain plug. Oops, there we go. You just barely see it in focus there. We're going to take our wrench and just knock this guy loose. Oh, that's one of the other design flaws this truck... Oh, come on. One of the other design flaws this truck has is that the... that belly bar is right in the way. Alright, give it a bit of a pull. There we go. Now that the drain plug is all done, we're going to bring the bin. Just a little bit behind this pan, or the behind this bar, sorry. And we're gonna start to loosen this guy off. Now, I recommend, I use these nitrile gloves all the time. I recommend, if you're gonna be doing this also, getting yourself a pair of nitrile gloves, because you'll just make a mess of your hands. And used oil can be cancerous as well, so just make sure you protect your body before you go ahead and do this.